Hello, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and in this tutorial we're going to look at creating this bicycle chain assembly in Motion 5. I was going to do you a straightforward COGS tutorial but somebody pointed out that that was very unoriginal so I'm doing something a little bit more interesting. For this project we're going to need to use the grid quite a bit so I'm going to show you how to set that up, go into Motion Preferences and I'm going to use a grid spacing of 80 pixels. So let me just turn that on by hitting command comma and I'm going to first of all make um, a tooth for my cog and I'm going to zoom in, I'm going to use the Bezier tool I'm going to draw a shape which is one across at the bottom like so and three across at the top and join it up and just make sure those are nice and tidy I'm going to take my shape, hit L to make a replicator and set the shape to circle and the arrangement to outline, the number of points to 13 and I'm going to hit align angle um, and then if I just centre that up we can see that I've got the beginnings of a cog. I'll come to the replicator and I'm just going to adjust the scale could have done that in the original shape but this will be easier so 35 by 50. I'm going to turn off the grid just a second uh, and now I'm going to hit C for the circle tool and I'm going to draw out a circle again I'm going to center that up I'm just going to scale it till we've got something that looks like a cog bring that out new group put that behind this group I'm going to call small cog and I'm going to move it to minus 660 on X and then I'm going to duplicate it I'm going to call it drive cog and this is going to be the larger of the two cogs this one I'm going to put at 480 on X Move that across so we can see what's going on and I'm going to come to the replicator and I'm going to set the radius to 400 and the number of points this time is 24. I'm going to take that inner circle and adjust its scale till it's doing the same thing as before, just giving me those cog teeth. Okay, so that's my two uh, cogs set up. I'm going to make a new group called cogs and I'm going to put both of those inside that group. I'm going to do one more thing just to uh, set us up for later on. I'm going to command select those two circle shapes and I'm going to change their color to something a little bit brighter like that. And it'll become obvious why later on. Next up I want to make my chain so I'm going to make a new group command N and I'm going to make with the rectangle tool a rectangle that more or less covers those cogs. doesn't have to be accurate because I'm now going to adjust the geometry. Let's set the mode to outline and I'm going to turn on the grid again and I'm going to double click it. I'm going to put a control point there and another one there. I'm going to count my geometry and I'm just going to rather boringly type in some numbers so you'll have to bear with me. The first is going to be minus 640 by 30, 480 by 410, 885 by 0, 480 by minus 410, minus 640 by minus 230, and finally minus 880 by naught. And that's more or less marking out the overall shape of the chain. Next up I'm going to make some adjustments to those points. I'm going to make that a smooth and I'm also going to make that smooth. And I'm going to come in here to this side and I'm going to adjust this bezier till I get something that follows the follows the cogs. Uh, obviously you'll want to be if you're doing this project you want to be 
fairly accurate with this probably more accurate than I've been there just need to move on and show you this quite quickly I'm going to do the same thing at the other end and I'm not going to go quite as far as I might because I need to make some adjustment on the other teeth as well so I'm going to come here and make that smooth I'm going to drag this one till it's more or less level with that and then I'm going to adjust this like so and do the other thing at the other end uh, shorten that one right down and drag that one out again you'll want to make that more accurate than I've made it and we can always adjust it any afterwards anyway it's not a it's not that big a deal okay I'm going to turn the grid on again and this time I'm going to make in the same group here which I'm going to call chain I'm going to make a link so I'm going to zoom in just so we can see what we're doing use the rectangle tool and make a shape that's three boxes across and one deep double click it add a point there add a point there I'm going to bring that one down to 20 and the corresponding one I'm going to bring up to minus 20 again you'll want to type in some accurate numbers here that should be minus 120 by 40 but I won't waste your time doing that and then in order to complete it I'm going to just type in a roundness of 25 and we've got our basic link shape which I'll call link next we want to make the chain itself so I'm going to select the link and I'm going to hit L to create another replicator this time I'm going to set the shape to geometry and I'm going to use that rectangle modified rectangle as my source for the geometry I'm going to set the number of points to 20 and I'm going to make sure that is centered up so it looks correct um, come in here again and align angle and then I'm also going to scale these cells to 66 percent and I'll turn off that rectangle source okay I'm going to make the other half of this chain later so let me just now sort out the mechanics of this assembly what I really want to do is this is the drive chain which will be driven by the cycle crank uh, the chain would then follow the large cog and the small cog which is attached to the back wheel would follow the chain uh, so how are we going to do that first of all I'm going to get that main drive cog to rotate uh, and I'm going to come to its rotation value parameter add parameter behavior rate and it's going to be minus 45 just to get that gently rotating next up we need to link the chain to that drive cog so I'm going to come to a replicator offset uh, which as you see drives the chain uh, and I'm going to add parameter behavior link and I'm going to link it to the drive cog properties transform rotation Z and I just need to make some adjustments to the linking behavior I'm going to set the scale to minus 0.6 and the offset to minus 9 and now you'll see that the chain is following that drive cog and now I want to link the small cog also to the drive chain so I'm going to come to its properties rotation Z parameter link I'm going to link it to the chain replicator uh, object shape parameters offset which is that offset value that we linked to the drive cog earlier and I'm going to make just some more adjustments to the scale and offset this time it's going to be minus 3.08 and minus 0.4 and now everything is moving exactly as it should okay let's next up finish off that chain and the way we're going to do that is we're going to duplicate that first replicator and in the behaviors we're going to set that offset link to 7 and now we've got a continuous chain what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the original link and I'm going to change its color I'm going to make it brighter 
and I'm going to add that to the cell of the first replicator and now we've got alternating light and dark links and again that'll become obvious a little bit later on while we've done that and I want to, do, want to do one more thing with the chain which is to create the pins that connect the links so I'm going to duplicate the replicator again I'm going to use my circle tool I'm going to hold down the shift and make a small circle I'm going to add that to the replicator cell of the latest replicator and I'm going to hide it I'm going to come back to its fill and increase its brightness then to the replicator we will increase the number of points to 40 so we've got twice as many pins and we'll come to the behavior and we'll just make a tweak to that Z offset till those pins are lined up okay good so that's our chain finished off I'll see you in part two where we'll look at modeling and lighting the scene